Fox and Ron King at Hollywood Park. Peterson is the winner. And it's Noah getting up, winning it. And they're off. Bob's running. Fox is drawing up. And Ron King is running away. Yeah, Jack and Fred drawing up. And Ron Cougar on the way. Now it's a firm dip. And Lucy just galloping. John Henry keeps rolling along. Snow Chief is striking. Best pal breaks away. Sabara is all black. Real quiet win. Piz now along the inside. This is the Yatta. The beautiful Hollywood Park. Days like today are why we live in Southern California. Welcome to Betfair Hollywood Park. I'm Matt Carruthers. Uh, day four, the 24 day autumn meeting at Betfair Hollywood Park. Gorgeous weather. Couple big stories. You have a nice feature in race number eight, the Sharp Cat, field of six, two year old fillies in that one. But the bigger story, if you're a gambler like I am, is the pick six carryover. $115,998. Pick six was so difficult on Saturday that five of six. Paid nearly $10,000, and the 50 cent late pick four was over $8,000. Great Saturday card, outstanding Sunday card as well. Nine race program. Let's go to race one now. Kick things off with race number one. Six furlongs on the firm turf course for Phillies and Mares, three and up. Claiming tag, $25,000. Nice Madel got some late action. The four of a five plus month layoff. Joe Talamo aboard, but your favorite. Promiscuous Suances at 8 to 5, speed down the hill on the 20th of October. You needed that race a little bit because you take them a little bit further. In race number one from Betfair Hollywood Park, let's go to Vic Stoffer with the call. They're up. Promiscuous Suances, The Gang and I, and Pinsolata, these three off the elbow. Nice Madel comes away running in fourth with 40 paces at the rail fifth. Then comes Ms. G.I. Jane, and the trailer is three cuties. Two of them match race up the back stretch. Outside Pinsolata, inside it's Promiscuous Suances, and these two match strides, and now Pinsolata going to inch to a half length lead. Promiscuous Suances is second by two and a quarter lengths to Nice Madel and The Gang and I. 40 paces. Gallops in fifth in the red cap and about four from the front. Then it's three and a half more to Ms. G.I. Jane. And then three lengths last to three cuties as they run towards the quarter pole. Pinsolata and Promiscuous Suances still do battle. Pinsolata half ahead in front. 40 paces, fifth now, but could move up into third red cap. Going to need racing room because Nice Madel is outside of her, and so is the gang and I. 40 paces, nowhere to go right now at the rail. Meanwhile, Ms. G.I. Jane is flying in the center of the turf course. The gang and I and Ms. G.I. Jane. Looks like it's down to these two, and it might be one. It's Ms. G.I. Jane. Ms. G.I. Jane beat the gang and I. Nice Madel was third, close for fourth. Upset in race number one, Ms. G.I. Jane from last to first. A well timed Rolex ride delivered by Agapito Delgadillo. Nice breakage on your five to one. You get $12.80. Merritt's now six for 26 in her career. Winning trainer Alfredo Marquez for owner Robert Cannon. Ms. G.I. Jane wins the opener. There was a claim in race number one. Nice Madel claimed by trainer Jack Carava. Carava claims the four in race number one. Final time for the six furlongs on the turf course, 110 and two. Race number two, kind of an odd distance, seven and a half furlongs for bottom level claimers, $8,000 tag for three year olds and up. And you have a huge class dropper in this race in the four. Bluegrass reward. We've seen Mike Mitchell do this before. Horse dropping out of a state bred optional 25. Drops down to the bottom. Went up as your heavy favorite. Did the four bluegrass reward at even money. Once again, the voice of Bet for Hollywood Park, Vic Stoffer. Race two. They're at the post. They're off. Good start for Lucky Fitz and Bluegrass Reward in the center, Manchester Man and Distinctive Dude, and Distinctive Dude is quickest out of the chute. Then comes Cola de Mezzo at the rail. Lucky Fitz is midfield, so is between horses Sir Hamilton. Then towards the back of the pack are Asset Play and the trailer up the back stretches Midnight Con, and the leaders are joint with Bluegrass Reward to the inside and Distinctive Dude outside and now. 
Bluegrass Reward takes a head lead. Distinctive Dude is second by a length and a quarter from Rain Gear, who's about to move up into third outside of Sir Hamilton. Manchester Man races now in fifth and about three from the front. Cola de Mezzo is next, just outside of him. It's Miles Air, and they both have about six lengths to make up. Lucky Fitz is seven from the front. He's a length and a half in front of Asset Play. And the trailer is Midnight Con as they round the far turn, less than three furlongs from the wire. Bluegrass Reward just in front, and now inching just a bit clear from Distinctive Dude, who has has no response and now Bluegrass Reward has taken charge at the top of the stretch and it doesn't really look like anybody's running on from the back of the pack. Maybe Miles Air, but Bluegrass Reward has built up a solid lead past mid stretch. Bluegrass Reward now five in front. Miles Air has moved into second, then Lucky Met Lucky fits into the outside. Asset play, but Bluegrass Reward has run them right off their feet. Now asset play, midnight con for a minor award. Bluegrass Reward in front. Bluegrass Reward won by six in the end. Asset play was second, Miles Air third, maybe Midnight Con for fourth. And it was your heavy favor in a romp. Bluegrass Reward pulling away from the field to score convincingly by many, many lengths with rider Martin Garcia aboard. No breakage, folks. Sorry about that. Four dollars on your winner. Final time for the unusual seven and a half furlongs, 131 and two heavy favorite scores in race number two as we move on to race number three six and a half furlong state bred maiden special event cow bred two-year-olds going in this one a couple vying for favoritism here and ended up with back to Baco going off your slight choice at two to one barely your favorite over the two star rocker who is your morning line favorite back to Baco two second place finishes so far in his career can he break through and break his maiden career start number three in race number three let's find out now they're off Gentleman Pete and Star Rocker break well. Gallant Charm is close up. Alley did it sent between horses. Judge Carr near the pace. Back to Baco moves through at the rail. Then comes Tiz a minister and the trailer is headlights on. Star Rocker is getting out badly up the backstretch and there's three horses outside of him. That's going to leave the rail wide open for Back to Baco if he can go through. Alley did it is just outside of Star Rocker. He's going to shuffle back just a bit. Judge Carr and Gallant Charm are two and three deep. Back to Baco moves Moves through fourth at the rail now and two from the front. Ali did it, shuffle back to fifth with three lengths to make up. Tis a minister has some run for Tyler Bays. Going to need a lot of racing room, though. Then three back to Gentleman Pete and far back to Headlights On. Wide open top of the stretch. Star Rocker narrowly in front of Judge Carr. A three wide gar gallant charm and a hard ridden four wide. That is. Alley did it. Meanwhile, Back to Baco has moved through, and Back to Baco is now second. Tis a Minister has found a way at the rail. Those two are after the front running star rocker, and here comes Tis a Minister. Tis a Minister levels out beautifully and takes charge. Back to Baco into second, star rocker third, and maybe Gentleman Pete. It is Tis a Minister. Well done, Tyler Bays. Tis a Minister won a length and a quarter. Back to Baco second, star rocker third, Gentleman Pete got fourth. Tis a minister gets through on the rail and scores as your third choice in race number three. 960 on your winner. Well done, Tyler Bays. Paul Aguirre, say racing. Congratulations on your score with Tis a minister. Two year old by Minister Wildcat breaks his maiden in career start number six. Final time 117 and four. Time for us to take a quick commercial timeout. We come back, pick six time. Race number four kicks off the pick six with a big $115,998 carryover. Bid Fair Hollywood Park is now open with exciting racing through Sunday, December 16th. World class racing awaits you with 18 stakes worth more than $3.8 million, highlighted by the grade one $750,000 cash ball futurity. Contests like Pigs, Kids, and Ponies are free every Sunday. You can your share of $600 cash. Join us for Fiesta Fridays featuring drink specials, Mexican munchies, and drawings for cash vouchers every Friday at Bed Bear Hollywood Bar. Welcome back to the Betfair Hollywood Park replay show. Matt Carruthers with you. Race number four, as I mentioned before the break, kicks off the pick six. 
$115,998 carryover. And everyone who saw Too Many Tomatoes last race, wow, that was a terrible trip. Apparently too many people saw it because she opened up at even money, ended up going up as your seven to five favorite. Did the favorite prevail in the first leg of the pick six? Let's find out now. Back to the voice of Bet for Hollywood Park and Vic Stoffer with the call. Race four, mile on the turf. They're at the post. They're off. Evasive Charmer and Storm and Seas break best. Too many tomatoes and roses for Joni. Always a chance could be wide at the clubhouse turn. And party with Brando won't be. Drops over to the rail. Roses for Joni and... Storm and Seas threw from the inside, and Roses for Joni's the neck in front. Storm and Seas is second by a half length to Evasive Charmer, who tracks from third. Then it's a lineup of three at the back of the pack. Always a chance. Was three wide all the way around that turn. Too many tomatoes just inside of her. Party with Brando is sixth and last, but only three and a half from first to last as they turn and run up the back stretch, and Roses for Joni is the leader. Roses for Joni, a half length in front of Evasive Charmer in second. Now Storm and Seas backs off and races third and about two from the front. Always a chance just outside of her. Two ton too Many Tomatoes is fifth with about five lengths now to make up. And party with Brando inside of her. Two by two by two as they leave the back stretch. Three furlongs from the wire. Evasive Charmer comes calling for the lead. And there goes Evasive Charler. Charmer as Roses for Joni backs out. Always a Chance is about to take second. In the red cap, she's in striking position. Storm and Seas comes off the fence to get by Roses for Joni. Too Many Tomatoes four wide and party with Brando top of the stretch. Evasive Charmer. Always a chance and too many tomatoes in the center of the turf course. Down at the rail goes Storm and Seas and also has a chance, but too many tomatoes is the new leader. Too many tomatoes. Storm and Seas, always a chance. Chase her home. Too many tomatoes. Too many tomatoes beat Storm and Seas. Always a chance. Third and party with Brando. Finish fourth. Well, we almost had a huge upset in race number four. Evasive Charmer. Ran her eyeballs out, got fatigued late though, did the three, and it was too many tomatoes. Your favorite at $4.80, your winner, and scores off that terrible trip on the 13th of October. She comes back and wins. Rafael Bejarano, Dean Pedersen, Harris Farms. Congratulations. Final time, 136 and 2 for the mile over the firm turf course as we jump ahead to race number five, six and a half furlong starter allowance event for three and up. And rock off the one, horse that only start at Betfair Hollywood Park, one by seven and a quarter lengths back on the 5th of July, earned a 90 buyer in doing so, went off as your favorite. Field of eight going six and a half. Once again, here's Vic. They're at the post. They're off. Chicks dig the shark right out for the front in high regards and tough and dangerous. Key reversal is close up. Eric the Ram and Baby Blake are next. Then Centenario de Oro and the early trailer is rock off. Tough and Dangerous now moves through to take the lead from Chicks Dig the Shark in second. Tough and Dangerous, three quarters of a length. Chicks Dig the Shark is second by a length and a quarter to Key Reversal Racing third. In high regards is pushed along just a bit. Red and white fourth and about four from the front. Eric the Ram just inside of him. Then it's two lengths to Rock Off. He's now out of last place. He's third last, but Rock Off had to tap on the brakes there just in behind Eric the Ram trying to squeeze through at the rail, and he had to check again. Boy, Rock Off's had a tough go of it. He'll have to be a mile the best from that position. Baby Blake is next, and Centario de Oro is the trailer. Top of the stretch, Tough and Dangerous is the leader. The whip is out on Chicks Dig the Shark, and Tough and Dangerous cuts the corner and leads now by three lengths. Chicks Dig the Shark is a second. Key reversal just passed by Rockoff. Rockoff's up into third, but he is five and a half behind. Tough and Dangerous, a 16th out. Rockoff gets into second. Tough and Dangerous. Rockoff closing, but Way too late. Tough and dangerous. Tough and dangerous won by a length and a quarter. Rockoff was second. Baby Blake got third. It's close for fourth between Eric the Ram and Chicks Dig the Shark. Brutal trip for Rockoff. Not one for Tough and Dangerous, who shakes clear on the front. And Joe Talamo at this kind of a number, 4380 
gate to wire, basically for tough and dangerous. 70 cents on the dollar in his last chart, but that last chart was seven months ago. Huge price here. Mentioned 43.80 on your winner. Well done, Brian Corner. Cahill or Corner, your owners. And again, Joe Talamo, your winning rider. Final time for the six and a hook. 117 and 92 one hundreds. Early pick four, Bet Fair Hollywood Park on a Sunday. $300.30. The pick five winning numbers one, four, four, two, two thousand eight hundred thirty-six dollars and eighty cents for fifty cents with that lovely fourteen percent takeout. Moving on, race number six, mile on the turf, Phillies two-year-olds. You had a late scratch of the three, Syrah, a big late scratch in this race. Horse was your morning line favorite. An overnight scratch of the eleven exchange student. Nine going a mile, two year old Phillies in the turf. Here's Vic to kick off the late pick four. They're at the post. They're off. Having a big middle and sharp Bella shows speed. Secret motive through from the inside, but Garrett's going to take her back tightly at the rail. Then comes Hard Buns, followed by Uniformly Yours and Mad Dog Maddie. Next, it's Rolanda and Supercilious, and the trailer is Topic. Having a big middle is the leader to the back stretch. It's a length and a half advantage from Sharp Bella in second. Secret Motive sits that perfect turf trip, third at the rail and about two and a half lengths off the lead. Then comes Hard Buns and Mad Dog Maddie. They've both got four lengths to make up. Uniformly yours, Rolanda, Supercilious at the rail and a four wide topic at the back of the pack. Seven lengths first to last up the back stretch. Having a big middle is the leader. Sharp Bella is much closer now in second. Having a big middle leads just by a neck. Sharp Bella is second, now by three lengths. No excuses for Secret Motive. She's gotten the perfect trip. Red blinkers and tracking the front runners. Just inside of her, it's Mad Dog Maddie. Then comes Hard Buns, fifth in the black and about four from the front. Universal, uniformly yours is next. Outside of her goes Rolanda and Topic, they move within five of the lead, and now Supercilious is the trailer, and having a big middle is still the leader. Having a big middle, now a length in front of Sharp Bella in second. Secret Motive comes out for the drive, and here she is. Then comes Mad Dog Maddie. Topic in the center is closing nice ground, and having a big middle is still in front. Having a big middle. Now Secret Motive is getting closer and inching, trying to gun her down on the money. Having a big middle, Secret Motive. Secret Motive gets up in time. Secret Motive beat, having a big middle right on the money. Topic finished third, and Mad Dog Matty was fourth. It was your post-time favorite, scoring Secret Motive. That was a tough beat for having a big middle. The four looked like she was home, but Secret Motive, Garrett Gomez from Off the Pay scores as your heavy favorite at six to five, 460 on your winner. Julio Canani, well done in a well-timed ride given by Garrett Gomez in race number six at Betfair Hollywood Park. Final time for the mile on the turf, 136 and two. Time for another little break. We come back, races seven, eight, nine, still to come on a great Sunday day of racing at Betfair Hollywood. Race number seven, three-year-olds, 16 claimers going three-quarters of a mile. Very evenly matched group on paper. That's why you had a lukewarm favorite in the four. I don't roll on Shabos, of course, that hadn't won in two starts at Betfair Hollywood Park. Ran fourth most recently at this level at Santa Anita, but back on the synthetic service, which is preferred. Slight favorite over the seven, running on residuals. Nine going six in race seven. They're at the post. They're off. Broadway Nika breaks well. So does Warren's Dr. Boo. Running on residuals is on the moon. John's bully Bob and I don't roll on Chavez in the mix as well. Rich Kid is next. Then comes Fist Pump and Willie Brown. And the trailer is Hey Yup. Running on residuals up the back stretch, a tight length in front of I Don't Roll on Shabbos, Broadway Nika, Warren's Dr. Boo, and John Bullies Bob at the rail. Four of them line up behind Running on Residuals, who now leads by a length and a half. Rich Kid is on the move three deep and draws 
into fourth now and about four from the front. Then comes Fist Pump and Willie Brown. They've got six lengths to make up. And Hey Yup is still at the back of the pack as Running on Residuals goes to the quarter pole. Now just again, a tight length in front of Warren's Dr. Boo. I don't roll on Shabbos' third. He could still do it less than a length from the front. Then comes Rich Kid to the outside and... John's bullies Bob, and they come to the final furlong, and it is running on residuals, and now he is three lengths in front. Running on residuals has the lead. Fist pump is outside of Rich Kid. Fist pump is coming on in second. Running on residuals. Fist pump into second. Running on residuals. Running on residuals, one by a length and a half. Fist pump was second. Rich Kid third. Willie Brown fourth. It was a seven running on residuals, getting the lead and never looking back. Very fair racetrack we have here at Bedford Hollywood Park. Gate to wire winner, two for Bay Harano, 840 on your winner. Willie Brown, the eight horse, claimed out of this race by trainer Mark Glatt, but a pretty easy win for your second choice, running on residuals. Final time for the six furlongs, one, 11, and two. And that takes us to our feature this Sunday. Two-year-old Phillies going a mile and a 16th in the $100,000 Sharp Cat. And you have a heavy favorite in here in the one. Scarlet Strike, why? Well, she was second to Executive Privilege, one of the best two-year-old Phillies we have out here on the West Coast. A Philly that ran second to Beholder in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies at Santa Anita last week. Scarlet Strike, four to five. Vic Stopper, the feature on a Sunday, the $100,000 Sharp Cat. Set. They're off. Good start for Odium and Tilda. Those two quickest. Renee's Titan will be three deep. Scarlet Strike drafts through at the rail. Wittgenstein and Majestic Stinger in a tight spot. Majestic Stinger might have to get out of there. She's really in tight between horses. And the early trailer is Midnight Ballet. And the leader is Rodium. And she tugs Garrett Gomez away to an easy lead. Rodium, sharp to the backstretch, a two-length advantage. Tilda races in second with Renee's Titan just outside of her third. The big favorite, Scarlet Strike, is fourth at the rail and about four from the front. Wittgenstein just outside of her. Midnight Ballet has six lengths to make up, and then it's a long way last to Majestic Stinger as they're up the backstretch in the seventh Sharp Cat Stakes. No excuses for the front-running road diem. She's had it easy in the first half mile and leads three-quarters of a length now from Tilda in second. Renee's Titan just outside of Tilda in striking position third. Scarlet Strike continues to race fourth. She's about three and a half lengths from Rodium. Then comes Wittgenstein and Midnight Ballet and way out of it and actually being eased up out of the race is Majestic Stinger. Three furlongs from the money in the Sharp Cat. Rodium has the lead. Scarlet Strike get a move through from the inside. Tilda suddenly is gone. Tilda has backed out of it. On the outside Renee's Titan is matching strides with Scarlet Strike. Three of them match Match strides at the top of the stretch. Rodium inside. Scarlet strike between horses. Renee's tightened to the outside. Midnight Ballet joins the battle four to the final furlong and Scarlet strike and Renee's Titan come to the final 16th with Midnight Ballet closing. Renee's Titan, Scarlet strike. Midnight Ballet might run them both down and here she comes. Midnight Ballet. The seventh Sharp Cat stakes goes to Midnight Ballet. She beat. Renee's Titan, Scarlet Strike was third, and Rodium was for it. What a huge performance from Midnight Ballet, obviously because she wins. Didn't break very well, pace was not particularly quick, and she still comes from off the pace to score at 10 to 1, first time routing, but she remains undefeated on synthetic in Midnight Ballet by Midnight Loot who was your Breeders' Cup sprint runner in 2007-2008. You wouldn't think she'd want two turns, but Thomas Proctor did the conditioner. Well done. Stone Away Farm winning owners and Julian Le Peru now making a home out here in Southern California with another well-timed ride here from off the pace to pull the upset. And in the winner's circle, a lot of festivities on Veterans Day. Mike McNulty presenting the trophy, retired U.S. Air Force Commander Thank you so much for your service to our country, Mr. McNulty, and for being part of the Winter Circle of Festivities for the Sharp Cat, which was run in a final time of 145 and 4. Race number nine, still ahead. Don't go anywhere. 
Ninth and final on a Sunday, we got bottom level, maiden claimers, Phillies and Mares, three and up, going six furlongs. You know, overnight scratches of some long shots, the two, Addison's Honor, the 13, Country Soul, and the 15, Crystal Coast. Tell you how wide open this race is, folks. Your favorite gets you at least $10. Lukewarm favorite, Hello Stormy the three, bet down from an eight to one morning line. Speed, the blinkers come off. For trainer David Bernstein was your slight post time favorite once again to Vic Stoffer for the ninth and final. They're off. Lily's Tiz broke very well. So did Mila Estrellas and Space Coast. Can't beat the heat is close up. No Mistress, Tiz a Daisy, and Hello Stormy are next. Then five times and Valeria with Tori Italiana. Next it's Malibu Bullet, followed by Fire in the Foyer, and the trailer is Shamrock Bay. Up the backstretch, Lily's Tiz and Can't Beat the Heat. Lily's Tiz, a neck in front. Can't Beat the Heat is second by a length and a quarter to Space Coast and Hello Stormy. They're together third and fourth. Two and a half lengths, two. No Mistress, Tiz a Daisy, and to the outside, Mil Australis, all seven from the front. Then comes Valeria. She now has seven to make up and on the move somewhat. Tori Italiana's at the rail. Malibu Bullet has ten to come, then five times. Long way last to fire in the foyer and Shamrock Bay. Wide open, top of the stretch. Lily's tiz and can't beat the heat. These two are matching strides. Joined by Space Coast on the outside. In the center comes No Mistress. And here comes Valeria and Alishka Kubanova down the center of the racetrack. And Valeria in Zenyatta's colors has taken over the lead. It is Valeria now two in front. Space Coast. Valeria and Alishka Kubanova. Her first ride at Hollywood Park was her first victory at Hollywood Park. Well done, young lady. Valeria won it over Space Coast and Tiz a Daisy. Well done, Alishka Kubanova. First ever ride at Betfair Hollywood Park. A winning one with the eight Valeria. By the way, Peter Miller claimed the winner, Valeria, out of this race. But congratulations again to Alishka Kubanova for winning race number nine from the Czech Republic. Fantastic job. And Valeria scores on the drop. Mr. and Mrs. Jerry Moss, John Sheriffs, nine to two on your winner. The eight pays $11.20. As you look at the prices right now, super high five. There was a dead heat for fifth between the six, no mistress, and the 12. Lily's Tiz, so super high five, 8,498. Obviously the same payoff to 8, 14, 4, 3, and 12. Four winning tickets in the super high five. Again, $8,598. Boy, we had some prices the last couple of days here at Betfair Hollywood Park. Late pick four comes back $509.80. Pick six. A little bit more difficult. Two winning tickets in the pick six for $234,517. The pool total got up to $772,480. You deserve every penny, in my opinion. Take that down the day. Five of six, $809. And in the place pick all, eight of nine, 20 winning tickets to the tune of $814 and 40 cents. Well, that concludes a sensational nine race program this Sunday at Betfair Hollywood Park. No live racing Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. We'll see you back here at Betfair Hollywood Park Thursday, first post at 1230. On behalf of the one and only track announcer Vic Stoffer and the entire television department, it's a massive one here at Betfair Hollywood Park. I'm Matt Carruthers. We'll see you next time. <laughs>